soccer here in goal for Chicago Paul Zimmerman 23 and 13 4.54 goals against average the invaders will counter with Jamie Swanner 16 and 4 on the year and a 3.73 goals against average that is the best winning percentage among league goalkeepers and the number two goals against average second only to Arnie Mauser of Tampa Bay and he's less than a tenth of a goal away from Mauser now after that 10 nothing shelling that the Invaders deposited on Tampa Bay here last Sunday. Forward line to start the game for Canton. It'll be Kia with Rudy Pikasinski and Bob Bosmeyer at midfield. Tim Tima and Oscar Pizzano on defense. For the Chicago Shockers, defenders are Louis Matus and Martin Rincon. Ruben Stevan in defense, Mike Lashoff and Salvador Valencia are the forwards. Invaders in the home gray, black shorts, red and black trim with black numerals. Chicago in red and white, red jerseys with white trim and white shorts. Chicago will dump it in the Canton end, and Bossmeyer clears it up in the air. Swanner pins it up against the glass and rolls the outlet to Pisano on the right side at the Canton red line. Oscar with Lashoff through the midfield circle, left side at the Chicago red line. Tima ahead in the corner down to Pikasinski. Rudy trying to get inside. Matus backs it outside. Tima, he shoots. That hits off Matus and sails down into the right corner. Bossmeyer will tap it outside off the boards. Knocked away by Valencia, then knocked back by Tima. And here is Kia ahead for Pikasinski. Back to Kia on the right side to Rudy. Ball knocked free. Tima with a shot knocked 
knocked away. Shot knocked away again by Rincon, who didn't even see it coming, but it hit him on the shoulder in the net. Kia to Rudy. His shot is blocked up in the air by Stevon. Heads it on the left side. Tima down the right side as the Invader offense comes out snarling right off the bat. Double teamed in the corner. Rincon can't get it away from Kia. And the trip call goes against Louis Matus. Tremendous pressure there early on, Bob. Couldn't ask for a better start. There's a ball knocked wide, and Stevon clears it out to midfield. Matus on the run up the right side of the four. Tima with him step for step in the Canton zone. And Lashoff backs it outside. Across stops to the right. One of the shot couldn't get it. Kia picked his pocket. Ahead it comes to Rudy. Dishes back to Pisano. Pisano, who is almost playing midfield now with Bossmeyer back with Tima. Around the right side, Oscar with a shot blocked by Matus. And he tries to heal it into Kia, does. Kia double teamed in the corner, gets away from it, but the ball hit off in a dangerous play against Chicago. And the team fouls now stand at two on the Shockers and none on the Invaders here in the first period. We played a minute and a half with no score, but the Invaders have been peppering the Chicago goal area with scoring opportunities. And we'll see if we can put one of them in the back of the net. Bossmeyer to put it in play from the right corner. Big crowd, and it's a vocal one. Bossmeyer centers for Lescarelli. Knocked back outside Pisano. He fires off the crossbar. And coming away with it, Lashoff can't get it. Slothauer dumps it in. Rincon heads it back out for Valencia. He had a little trouble with it at the red line. Now gathers it up and clears it ahead for Stevon. Stevon working on Condrich down in the Canton zone. Lashoff right side. Shot knocked away by Swanner. Steered back in the goal box by Oscar. And Jamie with the outlet on the right side to Tom Condrich. We've played two minutes at the Civic Center. Schlothauer midfield, the right side feed across the Invader bench. It comes to Paxos. Schirelli working on it in the corner. Back out front, it comes to Condrich. Condrich knocks it away from Elvis Comrie. And Jamie Swanner with a move around him. Left side feed comes to Schlothauer working against Keith Falk. Back to Swanner in the goal box. Comrie backs up outside the red line, and Jamie comes outside the box with it. Nick Dawson is in the game for Chicago as well. Here is Randy Pikasinski. Taps it back to Schlothauer. Schlothauer in the goal box for Swanner. Jamie will come out with it. Things have eased off a bit from that frenetic pace that we set in the first minute, minute and a half. Left side midfield comes Shkareli. Spin move inside Wolf. Pass hits Randy in the heel. Lesh got it back. Centering ball. Randy Pikasinski tries to get it over to Kondrich. The ball knocked away by Steve Swanson. And outside it comes to... Scarelli, his shot is blocked by Matus, who has not left the game yet for Chicago. They clear it out midfield. Dosen has it knocked away by Schlothauer. And Condridge heads it to the back edge of the midfield circle where Mike Paxos controls for the Invaders. Right side, Chicago red line. Condridge working on Elvis Comrie. Backs it up to Paxos. And on the right point to Tomo. Condridge again to Mike Paxos. 11.42 in the period. Randy Pikasinski against Matus through a double team. Ball knocked away by Comrie. And taken by Dosen. Now Comrie up the right side of the floor. Paxos and Randy back on D for the Invaders. Comrie, a couple of steps in on Mike. Moves to the middle. His shot is up into the stage out of play. And it'll be a goal kick for the Invaders with 11.26 to play in the first period. Bob, from the look of, thi from the look of things so far, I think the Shockers are going to have their hands full tonight. Practice this week for the Invaders was very intense. The boys were really excited and played well all week in practice and I think it's carried over here to the first four minutes of the game. A lot of offensive pressure that has been put on so far by Canton, especially the early part of the game. Chicago has uh, what when they get the ball in the Canton and thus far they haven't been able to keep it there. It looked like they came out high pressuring the first minute and we had about four or five good chances and they've since backed up to the red line and now they're even backed up to the midfield line. Jamie Swanner is out across the red line for Canton. He dumps it in high off the glass in the left corner for Rudy Pikasinski, working against Wolf. Out to Kia on the left point. Midfield circle to Vosmeyer. Vosmeyer, a couple of steps forward on the point. It comes to Tima. Tima trying to get inside the man. Centering pass. Nobody home there. But she had tried to knock it in, and it was almost intercepted by Tima. Zimmerman's long lead up the left side of the floor. Beautiful play by Pisano to head the ball away from Elvis Comrie. Comrie with Tima, and here comes Pisano the other way for Camp. Pisano through the midfield circle. They attack three on three. Oscar right side on Falk down to the corner. 
Oscar turns back to the net and he is written down from behind by Machia and the team fouls now three on Chicago and none on the invaders. Pisano a little bit slow getting up. He lost his shoe and has to put the one back on his right foot. No score here at the Civic Center. 10.32 to go in the first period. And the corner kick from the right side will be put in play by Vosmeyer on the point. Pisano winds, fires, and that had the, bat, the left corner of the net tar uh, targeted on it if it does not hit Wolf in the head and go out of play. It looked like Zimmerman might have been screened on that, Art. Well, Oscar took the shot from just about 25 feet out. I think it hit Swanson and went over the top of the goal, but it was definitely headed on goal. See what they do here off the corner. They might look for Oscar or Timmy just about the top of the box. Timmy's in the middle, Pisano on the right side, Rudy in the box, and Kia right behind him outside the left corner. Rudy cuts through, Kia with a shot. It's up in the crowd and out of play. He just got under it a little. Zimmerman had not made a move to the right side of the net. If the ball is low, it's in. Well, that time Rudy made the first run to the near post. The defender went with him. Kia came late, and then Rudy just kind of let the ball go through. Unfortunately, Kia just hit it a little bit too high, or we would have had one. Mm, yeah, because Zimmerman didn't know where that was going. He did not move on it. Kia knocks the ball away at midfield, back in the Chicago zone again. Zimmerman, Rudy's got him out in the corner. Ball intercepted by Kia to Pikasinski. Rudy back to Kia, left side. Ball knocked away by Rincon, but Kia chases it down out on the left point to Pisano. Oscar across the floor on the right. Bosmeyer centers. Ball knocked away, but Bosmeyer got it back outside to Pisano. In the right corner for Pikasinski. Rudy with a move on Matus. Outside it comes to Bosmeyer, and the left it comes to Oscar Pisano. Toledo and Tampa Bay, nothing, nothing, into the first quarter. Matus outlet, and coming the other way for Chicago is uh, Stevon. Stevon, midfield circle, and we got a trip call on Kia, and that'll be the first foul on the Invaders in the first period. Comes with 9.48 to go, and again, we are still tied, nothing, nothing. Stevon in the Canton zone. Kia tried to get the ball from behind, chases him down in the corner. Team to help out on the double team, knocked it away. And Timmy pins it up against the board. Chicago backs up on D again. And in the goal box, it comes to Bob Vosmeyer, now out front of the arc. Left side of the Canton red line to Pisano. Right back to Vosmeyer, middle of the floor. Forward at the Chicago red line for Randy Pikasinski. Randy backs it up at midfield to Vosmeyer. Airborne, and it'll be caught on the fly in the box by Zimmerman. Outlet midfield on the run. Come in Valencia, but Swanner is there to knock it away. Off the glass to Pisano. Pisano, between a couple of shockers, tried to get it back to Rudy. Ball was intercepted. Oscar gets it back, clears it in the goal box for Jamie Swanner. Out of on the right side to Pisano. Nine minutes to go in the first period. Long ball in the Chicago zone. Randy Pikasinski. Ball headed away by Rincon. Randy got it back. Red line Kondrich on the run. Taken away, and he is held by Ruben Stevan, and that's the fourth foul on Chicago. So the Shockers in foul trouble now. They have only one to give with 8.50 to go in the period. Invaders have committed only one foul. Condrich, left side feed. Tima tries to center. It's knocked away by Rincon and chased down in the Canton zone by Tom Condrich. Invaders putting a lot of pressure on, but you want to see him put one of these chances in early in the game. Here is Tima. Because you know that physically, you probably can't do this for 60 minutes. Not at this pace, Bob. <laughs> oh, incredible. I'm getting tired just watching this thing. Left side at midfield to Paxos. And the right side, it comes to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer knocks it away from Lashoff. Here comes Condridge through the midfield circle. Lashoff slides over on him. Ahead to Scarelli, back to Randy, and it's intercepted by Zimmerman. Outlet comes to... Uh, Falk. Falk got away with a push. Ball knocked away from behind by Randy Pikasinski. And back at the red line, it is uh, Dosen, and he is pushed down. The obstruction call goes against Mike Paxos. Second foul on the Invaders. 7.58 to play in the first quarter. Chicago dumps it out to midfield. Juan Carlos Machia there. Now Comrie, middle of the floor. Comrie down along the box. Knocked away by Condrich. That's Scarelli, rather. Here come the invaders. Scarelli with Randy to his right. Condrich to his left. And the lead ball for Randy was knocked away from behind by Keith Falk. Zimmerman controls in the box. Now Falk's got it out front. Good defensive play there. Bob that time by Keith Falk. He came all the way back from the his own offensive third to get back and knock back to Zimmerman. His pass intercepted by Mike Paxos, double team. Trying to get away from Comrie, does. Clears it back to Swanner. 
Jamie with it in the goal box. The ball on the floor. Outlet right side to Schlotthauer. And now midfield to the right side is Kondrich. Tomo cuts through the midfield circle and sweeps it on the left side to Paxos. Paxos knocked it away, and that one almost picked off Trevor Dawkins on the invader bench. Chicago will kick it in left side at midfield with 7.08 to play in quarter number one, and we are scoreless at the Civic Center. Not only is the crowd big, but they, you know, they know what's at stake here. This is the loudest crowd, I think, that I can remember here this year so far. Well, if you're a player, Bob, this is definitely the type of atmosphere that you want to play in front of. It's not too hard to get yourself psyched up in a game like this. Yep. And that's one of the reasons we did win 37 in a row at home. But she, a ball knocked away by Rudy Pikasinski in the corner. Zimmerman out of the net, put it up into the press box. And again, no delay of game call. I don't mind that as long as we're consistent, and they have been. They're not, they are just simply not calling it. Rudy and Kia out there together right now. They've been very hot in their last three games. I think they've got 18 points between the two of them. Well, hopefully they can carry that over tonight and get a couple tonight. Bossmeyer to put it in play at the curve of the boards on the right side. Centers Rudy, let it go. Ball knocked away by Wolf. And chasing it down at the Canton Red Line is Jamie Swanner. Swanner outlet to Tima. Tima backs the ball away from Dosen. And it is Swanner with it in the goal box again. 6.45 to play in the period. No score at the Civic Center. Jamie, long lead. Kia's got it at the Chicago red line. Ball out of a double team at midfield. And Kia got it away from Dosen to Tima. Ahead to Pikasinski. Machia knocked it away from him. Ahead for Comrie, left side. He didn't get anything on the shot. I think Pisano got a piece of it from behind. Oscar still down. Kia the other way, but it was a three-line violation as the ball was too far. And Pisano has still not gotten up in the invader goal box at the other end of the floor. He made an incredible effort to get to Comrie from behind and get a piece of that ball. And I don't know if he would have pulled something or what there. Well, like you said, Bob, Oscar did make a great play. It seemed like Elvis had about 10 yards with no one around him. Suddenly, Oscar came back. What he did, he stretched his body out. He stretched his foot out, actually. Or thereabouts. We've got NCAA basketball right before that, so we may join in progress tomorrow night. Stevon will put the ball in play from the Invader red line. 6.23 to play in the period, and we have no score. It's important tonight, Bob, that we get five men behind the ball at every time we can. Stevon's lead ball for Lashoff is swept out by Schlotthauer. Zimmerman dumps it for a rink on at the Chicago red line. Ball knocked away by Randy. Matus controls for Chicago, however, ahead to Valencia. Chava, ball knocked away by Paxos. Kondrich puts it up in the air. Schlotthauer and Lashoff fight for it there. Walter clears to midfield. Rincon with a shot for Chicago. That one's in the cheap seats. And it'll be a goal kick for the Invaders. 5.59 on the clock. Mentioned about the Invaders getting people behind the ball, Bob. Chicago has three, three of their forwards are at the top 15 in score. Mike Lashoff, Elvis Comrie, and Salvatore Valencia. So they have tremendous firepower up front. Valencia, Rudy Pikasinski, and Zoran Savick of Louisville in a three-way race for the shot. League scoring crown holding foul against Lashoff. It set up a steal by Valencia, or rather, yeah, by Valencia, but the foul was called, and that is the fifth one on Chicago. Next one will put the invaders on the power play, and we've got 5.40 to go in the first quarter. No score. Swanner with the ball at the red line. Sends it off the sideboards. Knocked away by Valencia. Kondrich got it back, but knocked it right to Lashoff. Knocked away by Schlotthauer on a good defensive play, cutting across. Walter had the angle, and he knocked it up against the boards and now clears it out on the left side to Mike Paxos. Midfield on the left comes Randy Pikasinski back to Schlotthauer midfield circle. In the Chicago zone on the left side is Les Schirelli. Schirelli moves it outside to Schlotthauer. Walter with that big brace on the right, on the left knee, back to Kondrich. And back at the other end, it comes to the goalkeeper, Swanner. 5.03 to go in the first quarter. Jamie ahead midfield, ball knocked away by Valencia, taken by Lashoff at the Canton red line. Up the right side of the floor comes Martin Rincon. Now it's Stevon with a shot, no. Rebound came out behind Rincon, and Lashoff has it on the point. Lashoff trying to get around Randy Pikasinski. Randy has him up against the boards. Now Lashoff to the middle of the floor on the right side to Rincon. His shot is knocked away by Swanner. And uh, Kondrich controls for Canton. 
high up in the air at midfield. Matus clears it in for Chicago. Off the foot of Stevon, Paxos and Lashoff in a race in the corner. And Paxos loses his balance and stumbles over Lashoff. And that'll be the third foul on the Invaders in the period with 4.24 to go. Lashoff will put it in play from the left corner for Chicago. Again, you like to see all that pressure from the Invaders, but so far, no goals, and you don't like to see that. Well, it seems that Chicago has weathered the storm, and they've had a couple good scoring opportunities in the last three minutes themselves. Flash off outside. Matus clears Rincon with a shot that's rejected by Randy. And chasing it down is Matus for Chicago. Back in the goal box to Zimmerman. Zimmerman outlet left side to Stevon. Stevon picked up by Scarelli as he crosses the red line. Now Valencia had the ball deflected by Condrich, taken away by Scarelli. Scarelli trying to get away from Rincon, and he is taken down by Scarelli. And that's the fourth foul on the Invaders as Lesh is called for holding. Actually, Bob, I thought that could have gone the other way. It looked like Rincon initiated the contact. But the referee decided it was against uh, Lesh. Gondrich knocks it away from Val Valencia at midfield. Matus has it in the Chicago defensive zone. Clears it ahead for Lashoff. Lashoff working on Paxos on the right side. McCanton in. And the fifth foul has been called on Canton now as Paxos gets the obstruction. So now we're even up at five fouls apiece. 3.46 to play in the first quarter. Next foul on either team will put somebody in the penalty box. Lashoff tries to center. Condridge knocked the ball away from Valencia, who took a dive and didn't get the call. Coming the other way is Scarelli up the right side of the floor. Randy Pikasinski stops in the point and now moves to the left a little bit, backs it up to midfield to Schlotthauer. In the circle, it comes to Condridge. Tomo right side to Kia, who's just stepped off the invader bench ahead Scarelli. Scarelli backs it up. Invaders in the line change. Lesh in the midfield circle. And he will dish it over to Tima at midfield. Now on the left side to Vossmeyer. Vossmeyer picked up by Comrie ahead to Kia. Kia working back to the net in the left corner against Rincon. Rincon with a poke to knock it away. Comrie to double team. Kia goes down. There's the sixth foul. Well, Kia did an excellent job there, Bob. There was two men on him in the corner. Just as Rincon had done before, he initiated the contact. And the referee was consistent in his call, and he gave it to the Invaders. And with 3.06 left, we got a chance to go up one here. On the power play this year, Canton 47 of 113, 42% on the power play. The time of this penalty will be 13.54. The Chicago penalty killers on the year have killed off 66% of their man down situations, giving up 31 goals in 91 power play attempts for their opponents. Six foul violation at 13.54 gives the Invaders the first power play opportunity of the night. The game is tied, nothing, nothing. 3.05 to go in the period. Rudy clears it over left side to Pisano. Pisano back to Rudy Pikasinski. And now Vosmeyer, rest of the power play unit, Kia and Schlotthauer. Kia, left side, looking to center. And now has to back it away from Matus on the point. Vosmeyer, middle of the floor. Minute 39 left in the penalty. Pisano right side at midfield against Valencia. Valencia, Swanson, Rincon, and Matus are the penalty killers for Chicago. Schlotthauer left side. He lets it go. He scores! Well, that was just a bullet from the left side by Walt Schlotthauer. He got the ball from Bobby Vossmeyer. As he's done so often in the past, he let a rocket go. It looked like it might have hit a defender. And really, Zimmerman didn't have a chance. If it hit a defender, there's going to be a bruise there tomorrow. Schlotthauer, we don't call him Thunderfoot for nothing. Boy, did he have some zip behind that one. Schlotthauer from Bossmeyer. Power play goal, the time of the goal, 12-27. And the Invaders lead one to nothing. Now the Invaders have 2.27 to go without drawing that sixth foul of their own, which you want to make sure doesn't happen. Chicago off the kickoff, ends up out of play down at the Canton end, and the goal kick, Swanner clears it ahead to Tima. Can't overemphasize the importance of Kia drawing that sixth foul. Yeah. Things like that in a game like this, is, this really looks like a playoff game to me, Bob, and true to form, it should be a little bit lower scoring than in the past games. Lead ball, Schlotthauer, and there's the sixth foul on Canton. As Walter, with the dangerous play, 
Got his foot up a little high in the air close to Machia. And Chicago will go on the power play with 2.09 to play in the period. The time of this penalty will be at 12.51. So we go the other way now. Chicago with the man advantage. The Shockers, 23% on the power play this year. 26 goals scored in 111 attempts. The Invader penalty killers, 73% they have killed off. 30 goals allowed in 107 power play attempts, and they have scored 10 shorthanded goals. Steve Frick, Randy Pikasinski, Tim Tima, Tom Kondrich, the penalty killers as Comrie put the, that one in the stage. And the Invaders will have a goal kick with a minute 58 to go in the quarter and 148 in the penalty. Right now, Bob, Chicago has five forwards on the field. Ah, uh, they just changed that. They just put Swanson, Swanson in. on. When we played in Chicago, we had a number of scoring chances on the man down. As Valencia and Comrie don't seem to get back too well, maybe we can capitalize on it here. Stevon is playing back, but... There may be a reason for that. Invaders long outlet. Frick. Frick double team. Dumps the ball back. Randy Pikasinski has it back to Frick. Frick with a good move to get around Rincon and then away from Valencia. And backs it over on the left side to Kondrich. Ahead for Randy Pikasinski. Randy on Swanson in the left corner to Frick out front. He knocks it in. Valencia steers it in the goal box for Zimmerman. But they just killed off about 25 seconds there. Steve Frick never ceases to amaze me on the man down. It's really difficult to come off the bench not having played a regular shift, but somehow he seems to do it and does it well. Shockers with Comrie, Stevan, Rincon with a centering ball. It's knocked away by Tima. Valencia and Lashoff, their power play unit. And Lashoff on the left side. Ball poked away by Tima. Comrie got it back on the point. Tima goes after him, chases him all the way out to midfield. Stevan trying to get around Frick. He chases him back to the red line. And finally back to the keeper who has it knocked away by Kondrich away from Rincon. But the foul is called on Tomo with 54 seconds in the period, 44 in the penalty. Invaders lead 1-0 on their own power play goal. Schlothauer from Bosmeyer at 12.27 of the first period. Invaders win tonight. They clinch the division crown. Comrie shot blocked by Randy Pikasinski. And the final score... Off the foot of Stevon, and I think that was deflected in by Valencia. Tremendous goal by Chava Valencia. Ruben Steven hit the shot from the right side, and Chava just flicked it on with the head, and Jamie thought the ball was going wide, but it just snuck in the far post. So Chicago, with a power play tally of their own, ties this thing up. Time of the goal, 14-15 of the first period, and we are all even at 1-1. Valencia's goal is his 46th of the season. Stevon picks up his 16th assist. For the Canton side, Schlotthauer got his 15th goal of the year, and that assist by Vossmeyer was his third. So each team with a power play and a goal. Rudy with the ball out front and has it knocked away in the Chicago end by Machia. It's controlled there by Zimmerman. Zimmerman keeps it on the floor. 29 seconds in the period. Long outlet, and it's going to be a three-line violation as it's over the head of Chris Karabatsis. And we go back to the Chicago red line with 26 seconds to play in the first quarter, and the game is tied 1-1. Vosmeyer to put it in play for the Invaders. Out there with Tima Pisano, Rudy Pikasinski, and Kia. Pisano, right point, lets it go wide to the left. Rebound comes out behind Kia. Nick Dosen for Chicago, a head bad pass for Karabatsis. Taken away by Vosmeyer. Karabatsis sliding play to get it back. Sliding play by Tima, knocked it away from him. Kia had it deflected by Falk. Dosen gets it back for Chicago. Seven seconds in the period. Dosen leaves it for Wolf. And Wolf up the left side, 2-1. That is the end of the first quarter with a score. The Canton Invaders won. And the Chicago Shockers won. We come back in a moment today. So half of the final four is set. The other half you'll be able to find out about tomorrow here on 1480. When we get done with that, we'll have the Invaders on the air again from Fort Wayne. 6.05 kickoff against the Fort Wayne Flames. A victory tonight clinches the AISA Northern Division title for the Invaders. They are knotted up with Chicago 1-1 at the end of the first period. 
Swanner in goal to our left and Zimmerman in the net to our right. Kia, Rudy Pikasinski, Tima, Vosmeyer, and Pisano for Canton. Lashoff, Valencia, Matus, Rincon, and Stevon for Chicago. Centering ball out front of Zimmerman. Nobody home there. Tima gets it back on the point. Into Rudy, who is hammered by Rincon and no call. And coming the other way is Lashoff. Lashoff winds, fires, and scores! On a play set up by a flagrant foul that was not called at the other end. Well, Rudy definitely got dumped down. DiGermano Ritchell was looking right at and didn't call. Martin Rincon took Rudy down. Chicago came down on the counterattack. Mike Leshev with a, a real nice cut on Bobby Vossmeyer. He just hit a left-footed shot that Jamie really had no chance on. It beat him low to the right side, and it's 2-1 to one Chicago. Time of the goal, 19 seconds into the period. Lashoff collects his 23rd goal of the season. Rudy Pikasinski in the Chicago end, and the ball taken away by Zimmerman. Outlet Comrie knocked away by Tima. Back to Rudy to Kia out front. Kia shoots. That's blocked into the corner by Machia. Kia gets it back to Pisano. Pisano left side to Tima. Tima trying to get inside Wolf, who deflects ahead to Dosen. Dosen for Chicago off the boards. Machia leaves it for Falk. Falk clears. It's too far. Pisano dumps it down in the goal for Swanner. Outlet Vosmeyer left side at the Canton red line. Now midfield to Tima. Tima ahead, and that ball for Vosmeyer is intercepted. And coming the other way is Dosen. Drops it back for Comrie. Comrie has it taken away by Tima. And Comrie sits down on top of him. Tima ahead. They whistle a foul. Tima put it in play. Tima and Comrie exchange pleasantries. Oh, Bob, Timmy made a real good defensive play there. He made a great tackle, put the ball down, played it to Rudy. He had a 2 on one but for some reason they stopped the play. And now it allows the Chicago team to get back. Vosmeyer clears ahead for Pisano. Pisano centers for Kia, and that's knocked away. Handball against the Invaders. And it'll go one foul on each team now with 13.49 to play in the second quarter. Two to one Chicago on goals by Lashoff and Valencia. Schlotthauer has the goal for Canton. And did they give an assist on Lashoff's goal? Don't know. I guess not. The invaders will have a free kick in their own end. Swanner with the ball in the box. No assist. Vosmeyer, red line for the Invaders. Right side midfield for Pisano. Pisano ahead for Kia on the run in the corner. Kia trying to get inside Wolf. Double teamed by Falk. Comes outside with it to Pisano. Oscar dumps it in for Rudy. Machia stepped in front of the boards to clear. Out on the point it comes, and Pisano controls for Canton. Moves it back away from Falk. Canton red line to Tima. Tima left side midfield to Vosmeyer. Vosmeyer working against Comrie. Through the middle, Comrie slides to knock it away. Dosen clears it back. Comrie up the right side of the floor. Cuts to the middle. Shot blocked away by Pisano. Machia centers. Kicked away by Swanner. And down in the corner, Dosen working against Vosmeyer there. Dosen back, and Tima knocked that away from Elvis Comrie. And Timmy Tima ahead for Rudy Pikasinski. Middle of the floor, it comes to Pisano. Pisano straight ahead. Rudy on the run, got behind Matus. He shoots it. Oh, what a play by Zimmerman to come up with that one. Zimmerman outlet stolen by Tima. Cleared away by Matus. Valencia has it left side at midfield. Valencia and Tima collide, and two minutes coming up on Tima. Well, Timmy was actually trying not to hit Valencia. He put his hand on his back. Chava felt the hand on the back. It took a dive, and the referee behind the play called two minutes. Well, we're getting our usual magnificent officiating tonight. That is a problem in this league, and it's going to have to be addressed at some point. Uh, you mentioned the no assist on the second Chicago goal. Actually, you might want to give the assist to the referee. Who well, yeah, it was set up. Didn't call the foul on Rudy. Put Chicago on the power play again. It's important here, Bob, that the, the guys don't get 
frustrated. I know they, they must be feeling a little bit frustrated. They've outplayed Chicago to this point, only to be losing 2-1, to one, and we just need to keep our composure and keep working hard, and the goals will come. Time of the penalty, 2.41, the trip on Tima. Shot sails wide to the left. Comrie has it back on the point ahead. Valencia, ball knocked away from behind by Frick, and Lola dumps it back in the goal box for Swanner. Swanner. Long lead. Frick heads it ahead for Randy Pekosinski. Randy trying to get inside Zimmerman. Zimmerman knocked it away. Ahead for uh, Rincon. Rincon clears to the middle for Comrie. 11.53 in the period. A minute 34 in the penalty. Flash off up the left side of the floor. Shot wide to the right. Rincon looks to follow. He scores! Well, that ball hit a defender, Bob. It was Martin Rincon. He was trying to center the ball to Salvatore Valencia. It looked like it hit Tom Condrich, and Jamie was moving out to try to cut off the pass, and it got in the near post behind him. Time of the goal, 3-16. Chicago leads 3-1. That's the funny thing about this game. A bounce here or there, and it goes in your own goal. Invaders want timeout. We'll take a quick break, 11.44 in the second quarter, and Chicago 3, Canton 1. The time of the goal on Rincon is 3:16. Rincon gets his 21st goal of the year and Lashoff his second point of the night and his 22nd assist on the season. And Chicago leads three to one. Shockers have lost three straight at home coming in here, but you wouldn't know it right now. Randy Pikasinski backs away from Valencia midfield to Paxos in the circle to Condrich, back to Paxos, Paxos with Valencia on him to the left side to Tomo. Condridge picked up by Lashoff ahead for Les Scarelli. Scarelli dumps it over to Schlotthauer, back to Condridge. Condridge dumps it in, cleared back by Rincon. Lashoff up the right side of the floor. He shoots and it's covered up by Swanner on the one hop. Lead ball for Schlotthauer. Rincon went for it on the bicycle kick and missed. Scarelli has it. Lesh midfield, he winds, he fires and hit the post on the right side. And it's a fight up against the boards, and Condridge comes away to Scarelli. Scarelli with Valencia there. Lesh moving right to left across the floor. On the point it comes to Schlotthauer. Backs it up to midfield to Mike Paxos. Paxos back edge of the midfield circle. In the air for Scarelli, and it goes out of play, and Chicago will put it in with 10.49 to go in the first half. Invaders trail by two, three to one. Although we're down three to one here, Bob, I think if we keep working hard, we'll be all right. It's just a matter of time before the goals will come. We've got enough guys that can score goals, and it's just going to take a little time and, and patience. Ball bounces off Valencia out of play. Canton to kick it in. Schlotthauer drops it back to Paxos. Ahead, Scarelli working on Matus. Matus spins inside around one, around two, and he is held by the second guy, and that'll be the third foul of the period on Chicago. One on the invaders. Kondrich will put it in play right side. Tomo backs it up to Schlotthauer at the red line. Walter through the box in the corner for Kondrich. Kondrich trying to spin inside Lashoff outside to Paxos. He winds, he fires. That's blocked out front by Matus. And Lashoff tries to clear away. Kondrich got a piece of the ball. Lashoff gets it back, knocked away by Randy. Pikasinski got inside Matus. Now Scarelli give and go for Randy, knocked away by Rincon and controlled by Zimmerman. Long lead, headed away by Schlotthauer. Drops it back, and it's uh, Valencia there trying to get away from Randy. Valencia pushes ahead for Stevon. Swanner out of the net to knock it away from him, and he sails that one up over the glass and out of play. Some of the people in the invader bench are trying to say that there might be there should be four fouls on Chicago. I don't know for sure. Oscar's I assume that's what that means, isn't it? That they're pointing over the scores table. And well, Oscar's just come over to the alternate referee in the box. He said something to him. That's pr you're probably right. That's probably what he's talking about. 10 one to play in the first half. Chicago three, Canton one. Falk to put it in play. Outside to Wolf. Wolf at the red line. Ball deflected by Kia, controlled by Tima. Tima pushes it ahead for Pikasinski. Rudy heals it back to Tima, who's pushed off by Comrie. Comrie will get the fourth foul. Pisano with a long lead for Pikasinski. Rudy trying to center out front. Gets away from one, drops it back to Tima. 
Tima left side to Vosmeyer. Vosmeyer looking inside across the box for Rudy. He shoots wide. Rebound Kia wide. The rebound Kia again. He's pushed down. He tries to get away. He does. Knocks it away from Wolf into the corner. Vosmeyer tries to center. Kia outside. Pizzano. Tima with a shot that hit the post. And it comes all the way outside to Dosen. Chicago on the run the other way. Tima tries to back it up. They feed to Machia. Machia can't red line on the right side to Comrie. Comrie, who's rapidly becoming the fan favorite tonight, backs it up the other way to uh, Zimmerman. 9.03 to play in the first half. Machia left side at midfield for Chicago. Ahead to Comrie, back to the net on Pisano. Comrie looking across the floor. Oscar took the ball away, and he will dump it. Now he'll keep it. And Oscar at a walk will come outside with it. 8.45 to go, and the natives are getting restless. 3-1 Chicago feeds it up. Left side at midfield to Tima. Tima forward for Rudy Pikasinski. Back to the net on Wolf. Crosses with Kia. Rudy takes it himself. Wolf knocks it away. Tima steers it over middle of the floor for Pisano. Eight and a half minutes. Rudy. Right corner. Inside. Wolf. He shoots. No. Just wide to the left side. Kia chases it out in the corner. Taps it outside to Tima. Ball knocked away by Machia. And it'll sail back down in the Canton zone. Nah, just shy of being three lines, and Swanner pushes it ahead. Vossmeyer working on uh, Comrie at the Canton red line. Left side to Pisano. 3-1 Chicago. Pisano, long lead. Off the boards, Machia in the left corner with Kia. Tries to center. Rudy knocked it away. Kia with a shot. No. Zimmerman lost the ball. Rudy taken down by Machia in the net. No call. And no, they got a penalty, I think, on Zimmerman. Dangerous play on the goalkeeper. How many times you see that call? Well, Bob, they owed us that one. <laughs> they certainly did. Some of the guys have to be shaking their head. Rudy twice had Zimmerman beat Timmy once, Kia once, and the ball just isn't going in for us right now. One time Rudy had him beat, but he had Machia all over his back, too. Centering ball, Tima there scores! Tim Tima pulls the invaders to within one. Well, Bob Vosmeyer from the top of the key gave the ball to Timmy on the left side. Timmy kept the ball low. Looked like Zimmerman got a hand on it, but it got in behind him. And that makes it three to two. Bossmeyer has assisted on both Canton goals tonight. Tima picks up his fifth goal of the season, and the Invaders have cut the lead down to three to two. Timmy's really playing a great game out there so far. It was Hope we can hear everybody over this crowd. It's getting loud. Well, it was loud today when McKinley beat Barberton, and hopefully we'll reach that decibel tonight as well. 7.51 to play in the first half. Chicago 3, Canton 2. Invaders have just cut that lead in half. Lead ball knocked away. Here comes Condridge for Canton. Ahead to Randy Pekosinski, midfield circle. Back to Paxos, ahead left side at midfield to Schlotthauer, and Paxos again taps it out on the right side to Pikasinski. Randy forward for Kondrich. Kondrich on Stevon at the Canton red line on the right side, front edge of the circle to Paxos, left side at midfield to Schlotthauer. Walter backs away from Lashoff, red line to Paxos, and ahead it comes to Randy. Randy trying to move on Matus. Valencia to help out, and they come out with a double team. Valencia had the ball knocked away from behind. Paxos got it back. Valencia didn't know where it was. Now he defines it, moves to the middle, can't get the shot away. Cleared out by Kondrich. Here they come two on one. Schlotthauer with Lesh. Scarelli shoots it into it. What a kick saved by Zimmerman. It was Scarelli on the keeper one on one and Zimmerman was up to the task. Dangerous play called at the other end on Canton. Second foul on the Invaders unofficially. We have four on Chicago. And Chicago dumps in the Canton zone, but it's in the box and Swanner controls. Outlet red line, left side, Schlotthauer. Walter blows around Rincon up the middle of the floor. Looks the feet on the right side to an open. Scarelli, he shoots. It's blocked wide outside. Sliding play by Stevon. And Rincon will get whistled for the fifth foul as he took Schlotthauer down hard in Chicago with 6.45 left in the period now with five team fouls. Condridge to put the ball in play for Canton outside. Paxos winds and fires, and it's deflected out of play. And Zimmerman is saying that he didn't touch it. Scarelli is saying we should have a corner kick. The one referee says, yes, you do, but from the other side. Well, he did deflect it over. I don't know what he can be telling the referee. No, I don't either. He did deflect it over. Lesh was lined up on the right side, and the other ref is on the left side. 
And the other guy, I think, was halfway believing Zimmerman. Condridge will kick it in from the left side. 6.43 in the period outside. There's his shot. No. Rebound. Paxo scores! Well, Mike Paxo took the initial shot. Zimmerman made the save. It came right back to him. The second shot, I couldn't tell, Bob, if it hit somebody in front. No, I don't think so. I think it went right through his legs. 3-3. Three, three, we got the momentum going. Well, there you go. They handled some adversity early. A couple of calls that didn't go the way we would have liked them to, but you don't let that get to them. Well, mentioned before, they just need to be patient. The goals will come with this team. There's too many guys out there that are going to score goals, and with this big crowd behind them, I really don't see any way that they're not going to win this game tonight. We're told there's champagne on ice somewhere in the building. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. I got my lucky jacket up here. That thing has been drenched I the last to... three years in a row, and we'll see if we can do it again tonight. That's what I told the guys. I went down in the locker room before the game. I said, you know, guys, get a win because me and Bob want a drink to be nice. 6.40 to play. It's still tied 3-3. It's really still anybody's game with all the offense that's on this floor. But the Invaders have gotten the last two goals and have the momentum at this point. I mentioned before about a low-scoring game, six goals in the... The last uh, 11, 12 minutes. You are now learning some of the hazards of being a sportscaster, Mr. Kramer. I'm so learning from Dick Vitale, I think. Pisano drops it back. Next thing you'll start losing your hair. Comrie with a shot, and Swanner bobbled the save, but then ca caught it and held on. Lead ball for Kia. Kia working on Machia. Chicago red line. Spin got inside him. Moves to the right side of the floor, looking to center. Nobody home out there. Machia pins it up on the boards. Kia able to get it back, but Swanson clears ahead. It's too far for Comrie. Vosmeyer back to Kia, who wisely taps it back to uh, the safety of midfield where Pisano is there with Swanson. Kia kind of stuck in a crowd there and elected to dump it out to Oscar. I think that was a sound move. Pisano lead ball. That's going to be intercepted by Dosen. Dosen with Rudy Pikasinski. Ahead uh, midfield Swanson picked away by Vosmeyer who comes up the left side. Vosmeyer got around one. He shoots. Hit the post. And the rebound comes out to the red line. Dosen clears for Comrie. Pisano back on D. Comrie with a shot. That's up over the crossbar. Comes out on the outside of the right. Dosen has it there. And out to midfield to David Wolf. Wolf up in the air in the corner for Comrie. Pisano stepped in front and took it away. 5.23 to play in the first half. We're tied 3-3. Pisano. At the Canton red line, outlet on the right side at midfield to Tima. Tima ahead for Pikasinski. Rudy working against Wolf. Ahead for Tima. Tima got around Swanson. Swanson and Tima with a shot. No. Swanson clears the ball back in the goal box. And the outlet to midfield to Comrie. Comrie left side. And he tries to move around. And he couldn't get He moved just far enough around Bossmeyer that Tima was able to knock the ball away. Long lead for Kia. Kia with Machia fights along the boards. They both go down, and Kia gets called for the holding foul. That's the third one on the Invaders. 4.50 to play in the period. Remember, Chicago is a team playing with five fouls. Swanner in the goal box for Canton. Outlet, Pisano, and now on the left side at midfield is Schlotthauer. Walter across the Chicago red line, moving on Stevon, blows around him, left side, winds, fires, and it's caught on the fly, then juggled by Zimmerman, but cleared back in the box by Stevon. Long lead, Condridge stepped in front of Valencia, clears ahead to Scarelli. Lesh looking for a feed up the left. He finds Schlotthauer at the red line. Thunder foot on the right side to Condridge. Tomo winds, fires. No, and the rebound came out behind both Randy and Scarelli. Cleared out to midfield. Chicago on the attack, three on three. Rincon with a shot blocked by Pikasinski. And Comrie chases it down in the corner. Randy slides over on him on D. And they back it out to midfield to Stevon. Ruben Stevon around Randy. Comrie, uh, rather that is uh, Valencia, dumps it out in the left point to Matus. Right side it comes. Rincon with a shot rejected by Randy. They dump it into Comrie, back to Rincon, headed away by Schlotthauer. In the corner, Valencia and Condridge fight for it there. And Tomo trying to get out of a double team with help from Comrie. It squirts in the goal box, and Swanner pounces on a loose ball. 3.35 of the period. Outlet left side to Paxos. Mike across the Canton red line. Ahead midfield. Now in the Chicago zone to Scarelli. Lesh on the left point. Couple of steps in. Backs it away on the right side. Here comes Condrich on Matus. Condrich around the board. Centering ball for Lesh. And the ball by Paxos is blocked. Lesh gets it back out front. He posts up back to the net. 
backs away to a safe area near the red line, tries to dump it in for Randy, but it's away from him to the right. Valencia had the ball knocked away at midfield by Condridge, and Schirelli's got it back for Canton. Taken down on the trip by Valencia. That's the sixth foul. The Invaders will go on the power play. Time of the penalty is 11.57. Not a smart play by Chava that time. No, if you're going to give a foul up as a sixth foul, you want it to be back in your defensive third. He gave that one in the middle third, and a coach that's, that'll give a coach gray hairs, Bob. Well, especially, you know, if, if you're going to do that there, at least prevent a breakaway. They had somebody back to help out there. Chavo did not have all the uh, defensive responsibilities on himself there. I think he was just frustrated when he lost the ball. You mentioned both goalies had zero saves in the first quarter. This quarter, both keepers have been pretty busy, notably Paul Zimmerman. He's made four or five excellent saves, a couple good ones on Scarelli. Game is tied 3-3, Invaders in the power play. They are one for one with a man advantage tonight. Chicago is two for two. Vossmeyer left side, Schlotthauer. He lets it go, kicked away by Zimmerman out front. Waller chases it back on the point, and he'll clear it out at midfield. Oh, Valencia almost got it away, but Vossmeyer... Shields him away from the ball, and Swanner has it back ahead to Bobby. 129 in the penalty. Bossmeyer through the midfield circle. Swanson comes over on him. Right side of the point, it comes to Pisano. He lets it go, and that one's out of play. Goal kick Chicago with 221 to play in the first half and a minute 19 in the penalty. Well, very important power play here for the Invaders. If we could get a goal now, Bob, put us up 4-3 before halftime, it could be a big psychological lift going into that second half. Zimmerman with a ball in the goal box for Chicago. Outlet Valencia, left side at midfield against Pisano, and he'll just tap it off the boards down in the Canton zone. Vossmeyer will come out a minute four in the penalty. Ahead for Kia, middle of the floor for Pikasinski, back up to Vossmeyer. Vossmeyer to Rudy, posted up out front, right side Pisano. Pisano back to Vossmeyer. He's open up the middle. He feeds Kia, scores! Oh, that was all Bobby Vossmeyer. He got the ball about 25 feet out in the center of the field, spotted Kia down to the right side, but Kia first timed it to the near post, past Zimmerman, and that gives the Invaders the lead 4-3 for Vossmeyer. That's his third assist of the game. Time of the goal, 13.06. The Invaders are two for two on the power play game. Kia picks up his 31st goal of the season, and the Invaders lead four to three. Minute 50 to play in the period with the ball at the red line of Chicago. Machia long lead. Swanner heads that away from Falk, and it bounces over the Invader bench and out of play. With a minute 45 to play in the first half, Chicago scored three straight goals to take a 3-1 lead. The Invaders have come back with three of their own in a row to take a 4-3 lead. Wolf pushes it ahead, and it's taken away by Mike Paxos, who had position on the boards on Dosen. Dosen fights back, though, and Dosen and Paxos fight forward in the corner. Now Folk over to help out. He's with Schirelli. Condridge to double team, and Tomo tried to heal it back and eventually gets it ahead to Randy. Randy Pikasinski off the left side boards for Scarelli. Scarelli in front of the goal box. A minute 20 to play in the first half. 4-3 Invaders. Here with 1480 WHBC, Canton, Ohio. Radio home for Invaders soccer. Bob Bishop with Art Kramer here at the Civic Center as the Invaders try to clinch the Northern Division crown tonight. Condres sweeps it ahead. You've got Paxos on a two-on-one to Scarelli. He couldn't get the shot away. He didn't get all of it. And Zimmerman with a save with a left hand. Ahead to Lashoff. Lashoff picked up by Randy Pikasinski. A shot. Good save by Swanner. Follow Wolf blocked by Condridge. And uh, Dosen gets it back for Chicago. Had it deflected. Swanner out to knock it away. And there's a collision out front. Paxos and Dosen go down over the top of Swanner. Dosen saying, hey, what are you doing uh, falling over me? And Paxos saying, what are you doing kicking my goalkeeper? And they uh, chat. Exchange a hand slap. Swanner shakes a few cobwebs away and we'll be okay. Forty-three really, three seconds to play in the first half. Really impressed so far with the play of Les Scarelli. He hasn't scored yet, but he's had a few very fine chances. He's kept possession of the ball well. He's playing really well tonight. He's also played some good D at times. 
Jamie outlet midfield on the left side to Schlotthauer. Now on the right to Paxos. 30 seconds in the period. Paxi up the right in the corner for Schirelli. Last centers. It's beyond Randy, but Kondrich will let the left footer go on the one bounce that's blocked out of play by Juan Carlos Machia. And it'll be a corner kick Canton from the left side with 21 seconds to play in the first half. And the Invaders leading 4-3, to three, needing just this game to clinch the AISA Northern Division title. Outside Paxos with a shot. No, rebound Scarelli wide to the right. Rebound Scarelli again. Moves inside one. In the corner right side to Pikasinski. His pass blocked by Machia. Wolf dumps it. Randy got it back to Kondrich. Eight seconds in the half. Kondrich looking for help out front. Five seconds in the period. Now Scarelli. He's taken down on the play by Folk. And with one second left, Canton will put it in play. We'll have time for one quick kick here. They're going to let Walt Scarelli shoots wide in the half ends. I think Walt wanted to shoot that. But the Invaders go in at halftime. Regrets for that. I went down to the locker room at halftime, Bob. The boys feel that they've got the Chicago on the ropes right now, and they feel if they get a couple goals, that things should be pretty well set for the second half. They Harvey, did. Excuse me a second. I got to do something I almost forgot to do. Harvey Reinhardt, senior. We say hi to you at home, listening to the game tonight. Unable to make it tonight, and also. Uh, Happy 17th anniversary for Art and Kitty Reemschneider. Happy 39th birthday for Paula Kreitzer, and I'm told it really is her 39th birthday. Also a happy birthday earlier this week to Jamie Gretz. You mentioned Art Reemschneider. He's one of our biggest fans. Not only does he come to the games, he, he goes, goes on the road sometimes. He goes to almost all the practices. He chases the balls down, and he really enjoys being around the guys. Nice guy. One of the friendlier people you're going to meet. Big, big fishermen. Him and Stevie Mauer sometimes go out fishing, and they have a real fun time whenever they go out. He does a lot of ice fishing. Just hope he doesn't fall in. Shockers are here. Second half will start with Kia, Rudy Pikasinski, Pisano, Vosmeyer, and Tima. For Canton, it'll be Stevan, Lashoff, Valencia, Rincon, and Matus. For Chicago, Matus on the retreat, knocked it away from Rudy. Rincon steers it back in the goal box. Zimmerman, long lead, and that's way over everything. Three line violation on Chicago. Put the ball at the Shockers' red line, and Bader's in control. Good crowd. I'm looking forward to hearing the attendance figure on this game. Don't see many empty seats looking around. Down behind the shocker goal, all the stands are filled up on the stage as well. Rudy shot deflected by Matus and controlled over there in the corner by Lashoff. Lashoff had it picked away by Rudy Pikasinski. Rudy trying to get the ball ahead to Kia. It's knocked in the left corner, and he takes it down centers. Ball knocked away. Centers. Kia scores! Beautiful play by Rudy Pikasinski, stuck with it after he had a couple blocked and eventually found Kia on the right side. Well, he did. He, Rudy was shut down in the first half. Like you said, he really stuck with that one. It looked like the ball was going to be poked away from a couple times. It went around the boards on the left side. The defenders all focused on Rudy, and that left Kia alone in the middle. Rudy just tapped the ball to Kia. Kia knocked it in for a second goal of the night. It's his 32nd goal of the season. And for Rudy Pikasinski, his 27th assist. And the Invaders go up by two, five to three. Here with the ball now for Chicago. Wolf ahead for Comrie in the Canton zone. Comrie working on Pisano. Rudy comes back to help. Shot blocked by Vosmeyer out front. Wolf gets it back at the red line. Now Comrie with a shot blocked by Pisano. Wolf steers it back in. That shot blocked by 
Pisano, and here we come the other way. Oscar had it deflected by Comrie. Bossmeyer able to knock it away from Nick Dosen ahead to Tima. Tima around Falk, the ball deflected and controlled by Comrie at the Chicago, at the Canton Red Line. Comrie down the left side, centering ball, knocked away and controlled by Bossmeyer. Bossmeyer up through the middle of the floor, left side feed for Tima. Timmy on the run, winds to the middle. Kia with a shot, it's wide and a little bit high. Rudy let that ball go behind, trying to draw Zimmerman away. And Kia couldn't quite find the right side of the net. Comrie the other way with a shot. Swanner save and a rebound by Dawson and saved by Swanner. Well, Jamie was prone on the ground and Dawson had a good chance. Unfortunately, he knocked it right into the legs of Jamie. Vossmeyer out in front of the goal box to Pisano. 13-15 to play in the period. Bob, I couldn't tell if the other end of Zimmerman got a piece of Kia shot. I don't think he did. That would have been a big goal there. I don't think he did. Tima pushes it ahead for Randy Pikasinski, who taps it back to Paxos. Paxos on the run, picked up by Machia, and his pass for Tomo on the left side is headed out of play by Keith Falk. Invaders lead 5-3, 12.52 to play in the third quarter. And a couple of paper airplanes to be taken off the field. Please, folks, if you come to the game, don't throw anything on the field. And that applies to soccer, basketball, football. I don't care what you're going to. Don't throw anything on the field. Tremendous sports day for the Canton area. Unless it's a hat trick. Then you can. Then you can throw the hats. Centering ball. Scarelli with a shot that's blocked out of play by Matus. I was going to say, Bob, a real nice day for... Canton Sports, first McKinley, and now to have these type of crowds, 4,000 plus uh, at the Civic Center, it's really great to see. Really is. Great that we can get this facility for both such events in the same day. We wish the Bulldogs all the luck in the world down in Dayton. Invaders trying to wrap up the division tonight. Outside, Paxos with a shot, blocked out of play by Matus, and we'll do it again. Condrich out front Schlotthauer right side to Scarelli taps it back in the invader zone to Swanner Valencia out on him Jamie lead ball up the left side ball knocked away by Randy but he can't control and Steve on dumps it in the box for Zimmerman lead ball left side midfield for Valencia dishes back at the red line to Ruben Steve on 1226 to play in the period Valencia lost the ball but got it to Rincon Rincon against Paxos, and he out front to Valencia with a shot. Didn't get much on it, and Swanner able to pick that one up on the one hop. Chava doesn't shoot many that are that soft. 12-10 to play in the period. Schlotthauer away from Lashoff, backs it up to Jamie. And Swanner will come out of the box with the ball on the floor. Lashoff cuts over on him. Jamie pushes ahead for Randy. Tried to steer it to the middle. Nobody home there. Rincon chases it down for Chicago and dumps it in the goal box for Paul Zimmerman. Outlet right side midfield on the run at the red line. Valencia. Valencia spin move on Paxos up against the boards in the middle of the floor. Stevon back to Valencia. The give and go feed hit him in the heel. Paxos comes away with it for Canton ahead to Scarelli. Lesh at the red line up the left side. Paxos on the run trying to get inside Rincon. Paxi back to the net in the left corner, spins, and taps it outside to Scarelli. Scarelli across the floor. Condrich with a shot wide. Condrich with a rebound. Score! Well, Tom Condrich took the initial shot. He shot it wide. The back went right back to him at the boards, about 15 at the top of the box. He let a low shot go. Zimmerman kicked at it, but he didn't get a piece of it. And it makes it 6 3. Les Corelli got the assist on that play, Bob. 3 38, the time of the goal for Tomo. Condrich will pick up his 10th goal of the year. And Scarelli has his 14th assist. And the Invaders lead 6 3, and they have scored five unanswered goals now. It's hard to hear myself over this crowd, Bob, after they score. They're yeah, trust me, you can't hear it on the air most of the time. It is hard to hear. You, you'll, you'll get used to it, though, <laughs> okay? R Randy, Rudy Pikasinski to Kia, ahead to Vossmeyer. Here we come on the attack again. Vossmeyer with a move on Dosen, backs it up on the point now, midfield left side to Tima. Back to Vossmeyer in the left corner to Kia, back outside to Bobby V. Vossmeyer inside Falk, he's got a room there, he shoots, that almost went in. 
I think it hit the post and then hit uh, Zimmerman on the hand and loose in the corner, and we got a foul on either Rudy or Vosmeyer. It's the first foul on either team in the second half. Long outlet from Zimmerman down the right side of the floor. And Comrie has it there. Comrie with Bosmeyer and Pisano on him. Wall feed knocked away by Tima and controlled by Pisano. Knocked back in and that hit off of somebody and went out of play. And I think it was off of Dosen and that would mean it would be a goal kick for Canton. Well, <laughs> Oscar still pleading his case down there. I got a lap, Bob. I can just see the people at home right now. They're sitting next to the radio down, turning it up and down every time we score a goal. I'm just getting a little bit excited because I can taste the champagne already. Pisano in the invader zone. Dumps it back. Yeah, and people think, I oh, yell. Yeah, you should see what this meter is doing sometimes when you're talking, Kramer. <laughs> Here comes Pisano up the left side of the floor trying to get around Machia. Pisano down the left side in the corner. Turns to the move out front. Centers through the box. That one's headed away, but Tima gets it back. Tima tries to tap it in. Folk blocked that feed for Kia. Sends it ahead for Elvis Comrie. 9.58 to play. Comrie with a move on Tima at the Cam red line. Now picked up by Pisano. Shot blocked by Pisano. Comrie got it back. Machia trying to get around Bosmeyer. Shot no. Slapped away by Swanner, and Bosmeyer controls out front. Here come the invaders. Three on two if they hurry. Bosmeyer to Rudy. He hit the crossbar. Rebound, Bosmeyer with a shot again. Ball knocked away by Wolf. And it's controlled now by Dosen. Dosen comes out with it for Chicago. Outlet on the right side at midfield for Stevon. Stevon with Tima there ahead to Comrie on the right side. Comrie with Pisano in the Canton zone. Moves across the floor right to left. Stops in the corner. Double team over on the right side. Stevon trying to move on Pisano. Rincon with a shot that's in the stage and out of play. And that'll be a goal kick for the Invaders. 9-16 to play in the period. Good chance at the other end for Rudy Pikasinski. Would have liked to have seen him get one there, Bob. Coming into the game, he had 75 points. Salvatore Valencia for Chicago was 73. They both each have one point tonight, and that goal there would have gone a long way to see him getting the scoring title. Yeah, Savick had, I think, 73 coming in, and I don't know what he did in the game this afternoon. Louisville scored five goals. He might have been involved in a couple of those. Swanner taps the ball out of the goal box to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer back in the goal box for Jamie Swanner. Long outlet midfield for Schlotthauer. Walter over the right side to Paxos. Paxos around Karabatsis. Left side Kondrich. Now Randy heel passes ahead of Paxos and knocked away by Rincon. And it comes down the length of the floor where Swanner waits for it. Outlet on the right side to Kondrich. Invaders six, Chicago three. Back in the red line, Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer, a little deep to get around Lashaw. Walter, left side, feeds on the right to a wide open. Kondrich, who shoots and scores! Lescarelli put it in. The Invaders lead 7-3. to three. A tremendous play that time, Bob, by Walt Schlotthauer. He came down the left side, got to about the red line. Started Tom Kondrich on the right side, all the way across the field, gave him a nice pass. He shot for the far post, and Lescarelli was there to tap it in. Well, they felt they had him on the ropes at halftime, and I think they were right. Three goals here, and 7-3. Scarelli has his 16th goal of the year. Kondrich, his eighth assist, and there's a steal off the kickoff. Here we go again. Randy Pikasinski trying to move on Falk. Invaders 7, Chicago 3 ahead. Scarelli shoots. No, rebound comes outside to Machia. 7-3, the time of Scarelli's goal, 6-19 of the period. Comrie and Scarelli at midfield. Elvis backs it up. And the ball intercepted by Kondrich. Tomo up the left side of the floor. He and Scarelli attack two on three. Folk with a steal for Chicago. Folk heals it back for Machia, but it's knocked away by Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer will win. He fires, and a good save by Zimmerman. Knocks it into the left corner. Randy Pikasinski there. Randy taps it outside to Paxos. Paxos from the point to Kondrich. Tomo. Move inside, centering ball, no, rebound, score! Les Scarelli, it's eight to three. Took the shot, Zimmerman couldn't hold on. Scarelli was parked on the doorstep. He knocked the rebound up above Zimmerman. I tell you what, Bob, it looks pretty good at this point. The Invaders have scored seven unanswered goals. They lead eight to three. Time of that one, 7-11. Get some more ice for the champagne. 
and Chicago doesn't look happy. Zimmerman coming over to the bench over here. And I think they're going to pull him. Garcia's putting the shirt on. I think they're going to pull Paul Zimmerman. He has gotten shelled in this quarter. He has given up four straight goals in less than seven and a half minutes. Well, that's on, no, Bob. I mean, it was a giveaway at their own red line by the defender. It came down two on one, and it, there's really nothing he could do. Oh, no. Garcia comes in with a record. This should tell you how much he's played. His record is 1 0. Oh. Goals against average of 5.14. But they've just decided, Zim that looks like a really a white flag. They've just decided Zimmerman's had enough. Uh, because I, I think if they leave him in, this is just going to keep happening. He's just going to keep getting shelled. Eight to three invaders, seven straight goals. Rincon with the ball, Canton red line, drops it back, and Matus has to chase that back in the Chicago end. And I want to tell you something. There's an interception by Tima. I had to Kia on the break up the left side. Kia with Matus, wall feed. That's controlled by Valencia. And Garcia now with it for Chicago. These guys are playing some incredible soccer right now. Here is Valencia. Right side to Rincon with a shot that's just wide to the left. And Lashoff has it back for Chicago. Tries to center. Blocked by Pisano. Rudy couldn't control. Stevon has it. Stevon left side for the Shockers on Pisano. Tries through the wall feed. Didn't get it. Kia double teams. He goes down. And the holding call goes against Kia. And that'll be the second foul on the Invaders in the period. Chicago will put it in play from the left corner. They dump it out front. And oh, what a kick saved by Jamie to send that one out of play. He hasn't fallen asleep back there, has he? Now, I think that coming into this game, I think Zimmerman was the leading goalkeeper as far as wins was concerned. And that, yeah, he has a new league record with the 23 wins. I'm sure Jamie's out to prove a point as well. Pisano just picked Lashoff's pocket over to Kia. Now Tima. Tima with a ball that hits Stevon in the hand. And that'll be the first foul on Chicago. Tima backs it up to Bobby Vosmeyer. Back to Tima, left side at midfield. Now Vosmeyer at the Canton red line. Long ball for Rudy Pikasinski. Rudy on lat oh, on Rincon, he dumped it in, and Garcia almost bobbled that away. His lead ball is knocked out into the Invader bench by Vosmeyer at midfield. Chicago will put it in play. 6.31 to play. 6.32 to play. They didn't start the clock, and we'll put it back in play at midfield. 8-3 to three Canton. Scarelli has scored twice. Kia has scored twice. Schlotthauer, Tima, Paxos, and Kondrich have single goals for Camp. Valencia working on Vosmeyer ahead. Ball knocked away from Stevan by Tima. But Tima also got a piece of Ruben Stevan. And the trip call will make it three fouls on the Invaders in the third period with 6.25 to go. And Canton has piled up a five-goal margin now. 21 minutes, 25 seconds away from the Northern Division Championship. Stevan to put it in play for the Chicago Shockers. Kia backs a couple of feet away on D. Stevan lets it go. Kia blocks it. And the ball in by Rincon is steered into the corner by Tima. Pisano there backs it out to the red line. It's headed up in the air by uh, Rincon and bounces out of play. Touched last, I think, by Rudy. And Chicago will put it in from the right side. Practicing with these guys all week, Bob. I just had a very positive feeling coming into tonight's game, and the, the sessions were really intense, and the guys were really playing well all week. And is it frustrating for you to be up here and not down there? I have to ask well, that. <laughs> honestly, it is. It is very frustrating not to be out there on the field. But heck, who? You know, everybody's playing so well. Who are you going to take out? Well, that's it. Hopefully, if they clinch it tonight, I'll get in a couple games. Number nine in your program, still number one in your heart. Ball dumps down in the goal box. It's controlled by Swanner. Outlet, Randy Pikasinski, Chicago red line, sweeps it on the right side. I don't know who's supposed to be marking Kondrich, but he's not there. Tomo with the shot. Lesh almost had the third goal on that one. That's the third time up the floor nobody's been on Tomo up that right side. Combray with the ball against Randy Pikasinski. They clear it in. Dosen against Kondrich outside the right corner. Out to Falk on the point. Picked away by Randy. Here we come on the counterattack. Randy Pikasinski ahead for Scarelli. Garcia knocked it away and hit Scarelli in the head and sails out. And Garcia hasn't given any up, up yet, but he's already chewing out some of his defensive mates down there. 
Well, 5.40 to play. 41-35 at the Civic Center. The attendance tonight and uh, a good crowd and it's been a good soccer game, especially if you're for the red and silver. Oh, a terrible pass by Garcia, intercepted by Randy. Randy up the right side, left side to Schlothauer, Thunderfoot around one, he's gonna shoot, it's blocked by Falk in the corner. And taken back by Scarelli for Canton. Scarelli outside to Condridge. Tomo backs it up to midfield against Dosen. Now in the goal area for Swanner. Jamie outlet left side at midfield for Schlotthauer. Walter picked up by Folk there. Lead ball in the corner. Again, nobody on Condridge. Now Wolf comes out to head that away. And coming up the floor is Dosen. Dosen ahead for Comrie. Schlotthauer back on D there. And Comrie with a shot that's in the corner to the right. Folk reaches out to control that one with the left foot. Working on Randy. Randy sliding play to knock it away to Scarelli. Here come the invaders, three on two. Scarelli with Condrich and Randy. He winds, he fires, no, rebound. Oh, he had a good save. Garcia going down to take the hat trick goal away from Scarelli. And coming the other way is Comrie. Comrie with a move on Paxos. Paxos trying to take it away. It's knocked back to Machia. He can't control. Scarelli has it for Canton. And you got a holding call, that's obstruction rather, on Scarelli. And that is the fourth foul on the invaders in the period. Comes with 4.28 to play in the third quarter. The invaders eight, Chicago three. Lead ball in the left corner. It's over the head of Comrie and cleared out by Paxos. A little too hard for Kia to get to it. And Stevon has it at midfield. Mal Martin Rincon, lead ball for Comrie. And Paxos with a good play to slide inside and knock that free. Kia collides with Schlotthauer out front, but they're still able to clear to midfield. Stevon has it there. Stevon picked up by Kia at the Canton red line. Right point to Matus. Back outside, this is Rincon and picked away by Scarelli. Lesh is playing, I think, his best game of the year. Lead ball for Kia up the right side. Kia on Matus for Scarelli. He wants the hat trick, and he almost got it. Garcia let that sail wide, and it just missed the post by about a foot and a half. Here comes Lash off the other way. Up the right side, he shoots. Swanner comes out with a save. We're playing end-to-end -end now. This looks like the NBA down there. 3.34 to play in the third quarter. The Canton Invaders eight, the Chicago Shockers three. Vossmeyer with the ball for Canton. Back in the goal box for Jamie Swanner. Swanner directing traffic. And I think they said he had the ball too long in the box. So we'll do it again. Chicago will put it in play from the top of the arc. There's a case, though, where you're up by five. I think you're better to take that chance than to make the bad pass. Lash off on the right side. And the ball picked away by Pikasinski. Rudy through the middle, and you got a whistle. And a foul. That one, I think, went on Chicago. The Invaders would have liked to play on sign, but they didn't get it. 3-11 to play in the period. Second foul on the Shockers. The Shockers played last night, Bob. You got to wonder how much fatigue has been a factor yep. here in the second half, although in all fairness to Canton, I can't see many teams having come in tonight and would have beaten them. Well, I'll tell you what, the last two times we had to go to Chicago, we were in the other boat. We had to play at home the night before and then travel, so I think that's only fair. How Gertie, well I know. Rudy Pikasinski, here comes Rincon for Chicago. Rincon picked up by Pisano at the red line. Right side feed, lash off, wall feed, knocked away. Pikasinski trying to clear. Stevon got it, taken away by Swanner. And Jamie, a little upset, ball knocked free. And coming out with it is Vossmeyer. He's taken down. And the trip call goes against Rincon. Swanner didn't appreciate at all what was happening in front of his net there. Well, Ruben Steven felt there was supposed to be a penalty called against Jamie, and it wasn't called, and Oscar was coming the other way, and Martin Rincon just kind of stuck his foot out and tripped Oscar as he went by. A little bit of frustration on his part. That happens when you're down five goals with two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Canton eight, Chicago three, Pisano long lead. Who's marking Tima? Nobody right now. Tima dumps it inside, but Garcia scoops that up. Outlet midfield for Lashoff. Vossmeyer's back with him. Uh, head up the left side of the floor for Rincon. Kia back on D there. And the shot rejected by Tima. And Matus in a race with Rudy. Steers it over to Stevon. Stevon back in the midfield circle for Louis Matus. Up the left side for Chava. Valencia working on Pisano. Inside, Valencia spins back out front to Matus. Two minutes to go in the quarter. 
Steve Vaughn on the right side. And here is Lashoff trying to get inside Bobby Vosmeyer. And they both go down. It ends up at the feet of Steve Vaughn. Steve Vaughn around one, around two. Rudy Pikasinski picked his pocket. Coming the other way is Kia. Kia trying to move on Matus. Middle of the floor. And you got a two-minute card coming up on somebody. On Lashoff, I believe. Well, is it Lashoff or Rudy or both of them? It, it's Lashoff. Behind the play, Rudy made the steal. He dumped the ball out, and after the play was over, he just took a whack at Rudy. It was very uncalled for. As you mentioned before, five goals down. I think that's probably the reason for it. Well, Lashoff got thrown out of a game here earlier this year for taking a cheap shot at Bill Namofsky. You remember that one. Uh, Billy also tossed out of that as he retaliated. I got Amofsky a keychain that week and said, go ahead, make my day. I think he still carries that thing around with him. Mentioning Rudy, his wife Peggy's in the stands tonight. She came down from Buffalo. She listens to most of the broadcasts on WHBC all the way up in Buffalo. And he hasn't scored tonight. He's played well, but I'm sure that he's really itching to get one here. As one assist, but no goals. When she's here, he usually has very good games. He usually plays well all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Say, how many bad games has he played this year? <laughs> Let's see if we can't get him one here on the power play. Lashoff sits down for two. Invaders are two for two on the power play tonight. Oh, they're going to put two of them in, I think. Lashoff comes. What's going on here? Who do they want? Do they want somebody else other than Lashoff? I don't think they know. I think they pointed at either Valencia or Matus. The penalty should have been on Lashoff. Well, Lashoff has one foot in the box, one foot out. Valencia, it looks like he's standing in line at the ticket counter to get in. And they're going to put them both in. What's the second one for? Probably descent. Well, Valencia goes off also at 13.22. They made no announcement on the second penalty as of yet. They called Lashoff for unsportsmanlike conduct. I think he signaled dissent on Valencia. What was the call on Valencia? Well, they got Valencia for tripping, Bob, and I guess they got Lashoff for the dissent. Okay, two-man advantage. Here's Rudy. To Kia and Garcia able to step in front and pick it away. Matus did a good job along the boards there. You're allowed to throw it over three lines when you're two men down. And Garcia just took advantage of that rule to fire at the length of the floor. I don't know if that's a good or not because I think the attacking team gets it back up quicker. Here's Pisano. Pikasinski in the corner. Back outside to Oscar in the middle of Osmeyer. Invaders with a two-man advantage for another minute 23. Osmeyer left point to Schlotthauer. Back to Bobby Vosmeyer. Left side, Pisano. Back outside to Vosmeyer. Vosmeyer on the left to Schlotthauer. Thunderfoot wants to let it go. He does. And that one singed the fingertips of Garcia as it went over his hand and out of play. And it'll be a corner kick for Canton from the right side. 45 seconds to play in the period. A minute six in the double penalties. I don't envy... Jose Garcia with Walt Schlotthauer on one side, Oscar Pisano on the other, two of the hardest shots in the league. Mm -hmm. Pisano through the box to Kia outside to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer to Vosmeyer. Out front to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer in the middle, now on the right to Pisano. He shoots, oh, that one just missed to the right. 32 seconds in the quarter. Vosmeyer at the red line, Canton 8, Chicago 3. Bossmeyer, a couple of steps in on the right to Schlotthauer. Shot. That was hit. It's loose out front. 
and sent the length of the floor by Rincon. Caught on the fly by Swanner. Jamie will come out ahead to uh, Vossmeyer. 12 seconds to play. Vossmeyer, middle, winds, fires. Slapped into the corner by Garcia and dumped out with 4-3. That'll be the end of the period. And after three, the Invaders lead the Chicago Shockers. Eight to three. We come back to the Civic Center in a moment. Hello. You mentioned Kondrich and Scarelli combining for three goals. It could be the Yugoslavian connection out there. There you go. Right side in the corner. Kia centers, and Garcia grabs that and holds on. He hasn't given up a goal since coming in, although, frankly, he has looked a little shaky at times. Four seconds left in the double penalties, and they're going to kill him off. Lashoff and Valencia come out. Pisano, right side to Kia. Kia centers through the box that's knocked away by Rincon, but knocked back by Paxos. Paxos, good play to knock it away from Swanson, but Valencia was right there. And at midfield, it is Rincon in the circle. Left side to Lashoff. Lashoff to the middle of the floor, left to right. Schlothauer comes out to confront him. Now Machia left side. Machia working against Kia, backs up to midfield and backs it up to uh, Garcia in front of the goal box. Garcia ahead for Falk, dumps it on the right side and uh, it's taken there by Rincon ahead to Falk. And now Salvador Valencia down in the corner. Falk with a shot, no rebound score by Lashoff. And that makes it 8-4. Lash off from Valencia. Lash off second goal of the night. And Chicago first on the board in the fourth quarter. Time of the goal, 115. I think uh, Peter Falk actually got that assist. He came down the left side, knocks it off the boards to Mike Lashoff, who had come out of the penalty box about 30 seconds earlier. And he just knocked it in past Jamie. You're right, it is Falk on the assist. We don't want to become complacent here, a four-goal lead, but in the past we've seen those disappear. It's a funny game, but... And still a lot of time. Yeah, you do not want to be... Uh, you've seen bigger leads than that to evaporate when we weren't looking. Pisano with the ball at the Canton red line. I had to team it, and it's dumped back. Team it, trying to push it ahead for Pisano. Pisano, ball knocked away by Comrie, but Oscar got it back on the run with Machia. But she had the angle and dumps it down in the Chicago zone. Garcia out of there to knock it away to midfield, but Lola has it for Canton, but Machia sends it up in the air for Comrie. Comrie, Swanner heads it away from him. Comrie gets it back in the corner. Pisano and Lola to double team, and it's dumped in the goal box for Jamie. Long lead for Rudy. Got behind Folk up the left side. Pikasinski with Kia trailing to the right. And it's dumped in the box and controlled by Garcia. Long lead intercepted by Pisano at midfield. Falk got it back at the Chicago red line. Falk picked away by Pikasinski. Sliding play by Machia to knock it away from him ahead to Comrie. Comrie right point in the Canton zone to the middle of the floor. He shoots blocked by Tima. And Falk has it in the left corner for Chicago outside to Machia. Machia with a shot. Swanner with a good save out front. Kia still down on the floor. And timeout will be called. Kia grabbing a hold of that right leg with 12.33 left in the game. I think he just got whacked in the shin there. 
That hurts. We'll have a drop ball in the Canton zone to the left of Jamie Swanner as he looks at it. 12.33 left in the game. Canton 8, Chicago 4. Invaders win. They clinch the Northern Division. Condridge dumps it out to midfield. Rincon in the circle there for Chicago. Ahead for Lashoff, but Swanner cleared that away. And did he ever. <laughs> Way out of play and long. If it would have stayed in play, it would have been three lines. It's better that it went out. They had to take it down at that end. Rincon to put it in play for the Shockers. Up in the air for Lashoff. Lashoff trying to get away from Schlotthauer. Forces him back on the left side. It comes to Rincon with a shot headed up by Valencia. Hit the crossbar. Bounces out to Scarelli. Headed away from Lashoff. And a foul on Lashoff as he had an elbow into Randy Pikasinski. That's the first foul on either team in the fourth period. This Canton is 8, Chicago 4. A little bit of complacency setting in here, Bob. It's natural whenever you do get a big lead to let down a little bit. Hopefully it won't cost us here. If we can get another goal, I think we can wrap this up. Jamie Swanner, long lead for Mike Paxos, dumps it in the Chicago zone. Matu sends it back out. Lashoff moves down the left side. Randy on the run with him. Matus wall feed blocked by Paxos. Randy Pikasinski clears it out for Condridge. And he dumps it out to midfield. Rincon has it there for Chicago. Martin Rincon, the ball apparently had gone out of play and hit the glass in the scoring table, touched last by Chicago. So we'll put it back in play. Is that a final? No. I... Final? That's a final. Tampa Bay gets shut out by Toledo, two to nothing. Well, the Rowdies have their problems. That's two shutouts in a week. They're in the playoffs, but I'd be willing to bet not for long. Swanner, outlet to Schlotthauer. Walter trying to get away from Stevon. Can't do it. Here they come. Three on the keeper. Comrie with a shot scores. And Chicago has cut it down to three goals with 11.24 left in the game. Elvis Comrie with that goal. And all of a sudden, this is not quite as secure as it once looked. Well, there was... The Invaders got caught losing the ball in their own zone. Chicago came in 3-0. on uh, Mike Paxo tried to get back, but Elvis Comrie's got a lot of speed, and he beat Jamie down to his right side. 3.36, the time of the goal. Comrie gets it to cut the lead to 8-5. Machia in the Chicago zone, dumps it out. Tima knocked the ball away. Kia back to Tima, couldn't control. Falk got it back for Chicago. Uh, head midfield on the right side with it is uh, Dosen. And now they drop it back to Tommy Isaroff. Coming up the floor is Tima for Canton. And the ball is a little bit behind Rudy. Machia and Rudy fight for it at midfield. Ahead uh, to Falk, he can't control. Tima puts it for Kia. Kia trying to get inside Isaroff. Now heads it back for Kenny Lola. Lola left point. Lola moves down, crosses with Kia, who comes back out to midfield. 10.43 left in the game. Canton 8, Chicago 5. One time it was 8-3. Pisano back at the Invader red line. Lead ball, Machia has it back in the Chicago zone. And they'll try to come back out with it. Isaroff across the red line. Right edge of the midfield circle. Left side feed in the zone for Falk, but Tima got there first. Taken back, centers out front. Isaroff, right side for Comrie in a race with Pisano. And Comrie can't control. Lola had it knocked away by Isaroff. And Comrie with a hack on Pisano. Oscar goes down. And that's the second foul on the Shockers in the period. None on Canton. We've got 10-11 left in the game. The Invaders lead by three, eight to five. Oscar Pisano back to Swanner. Right back out to Oscar. Now on the right side comes Tima. Tima on the run with Comrie, puts it ahead. It goes between the legs of Isaroff. Rudy couldn't get it. Outside for Lola. Lola tried to clear it, but it's knocked out of play. Touch last by Isaroff. And the Invaders will put it in play. Touch line left side in the Chicago defensive zone. 9.59 left in the game. 8-5 can't. I was informed before, Bob, that the double penalty to Chicago, the tripping on Valencia was a delayed call, meaning that Although there was a trip, play was allowed to mm -hmm. go on until Chicago touched the ball. They don't always call that. 
like hockey in which they do until the puck is touched. It's something I'd like to see called more in the future. Lola dumps it outside to Pisano in the air in the right corner for Rudy. And he tried to get it to Kia, but it was caught on the fly by Garcia. Outlet Lashoff. Lashoff trying to move around Kia does up the right side of the floor. Lashoff ahead for Valencia. Ball deflected by Oscar Pisano. Lola trying to get away from Valencia. Gets it back to Pisano ahead to Pikasinski. Rudy left side of the floor at midfield for Lola. Lola ahead for Kia. Kia tries to center. It's ahead of Lola. Garcia mishandled it. It squirts loose on the left side and Rincon controls for Chicago. Martin Rincon up the left side of the floor. Red line, Lashoff, knocked away by Tima. Lashoff goes down. And Lashoff would have liked to have gotten two on that, didn't. First foul on the Invaders. Lashoff had gotten two on that. He would have gotten an Academy Award. Kia knocks the ball away. Tima couldn't quite get it. And you got to hold on Lashoff on the other side for grabbing on to Kia. So that's the third one on Lashoff. Or not on, on the team, rather. That Lash, did, Lashoff has a few more than that. That didn't look too bad, actually. But just before that, Lashoff was arguing with the referee. It could be like, you know, in baseball, you argue with the umpire. You don't get the call the next time. Lola, ball deflected by Rincon, but Kia gets it for Canton. Kia on the left side at midfield. Clears it over on the right to Pisano. Pisano ahead for Rudy Pikasinski working on Matus. Rudy lost his balance. Lola knocks the ball away from Rincon, but coming the other way is Ruben Stevon for Chicago. Now Rincon, right edge of the midfield circle. Right point in the Canton zone for Lashoff. Ball knocked away by Tima. Shot by Matus is blocked out front by Lola, who clears it for Rudy Pikasinski. Rudy Pikasinski to Tima. Timmy left side at midfield. Eight and a half minutes left in the game. Tima with Stevon back on D, backs it up to Condrich. Invaders want a line change. Chicago will do likewise. Pisano with a move on Comrie up ahead. Ball knocked away, but right to Scarelli. Scarelli right side to Pisano. He fires right into the chest of Garcia, who was able to hold on and pushes it ahead for Chava Valencia. Look at Randy Pikasinski run down Rincon from behind and coming the other way is Scarelli. Scarelli with a good move around Stevon left side. He fires. No rebound comes out behind Randy. And Ruben Stevon the other way for Chicago. Clears left side at midfield for Comrie. Comrie winds and fires, and that one's out of play. And it'll be a goal kick Canton with 7.52 left in the game. The Invaders lead by three. While I have a chance there, Bob, with a stoppage in play, I just want to make a comment on the play of Mike Paxo, who's done a very fine job tonight. And it, it's encouraging to me to not only see American players play, but he's also a, a local product. And that has to be very encouraging to all the young kids around the Canton area. He's probably matured as much in this one year as anybody I've seen. I think that's what the game's about, though, to not only have American players, but when you could start putting local products on the field, it, it's really got to uh, encourage the young kids around this area to see a kid that grew up, uh, played at Glen Oak High School, and now he's out here playing for the professional team in town. Juan Carlos Machia with the ball at the Chicago Red Line. Scarelli on D for Canton. Dump it in the goal box for Garcia. We have seven and a half minutes left in the game. Wolf right side back to Garcia. Bad pass taken away by Schlotthauer at midfield. Here they come three on three. Schlotthauer with a shot, and Garcia comes up big with a save. Jose Garcia may be making a bid for some playing time now. He has played pair fairly well after the first maybe four minutes that he came in. 7.24 left to go. Corner kick from the right side for the Invaders. Condrich outside. Paxos with a shot blocked by Comrie. Comrie had a little trouble with that, and Condrich took it away from behind. Left side, Scarelli fires it. Paxos looking for the follow. Dumps it inside. It's blocked there. Condrich got it back, and it's cleared in. Loose. Randy with a shot. No. Rebound out to Scarelli. Scarelli had the ball knocked away. Clears on the left. And it's knocked away to midfield by Machia. Here comes Comrie. Comrie ridden away from the ball by Schlotthauer. And tries to center. Shot by Falk is blocked by Paxos. Schlotthauer clears. And it's loose. Comrie and Swanner collide. And a foul goes on Comrie. And that'll be the fourth one on the Shockers in the period. Comes with 6.50 to play. I played with Elvis in the All-Star game. He had a goal and a couple assists there. He really looks dangerous out there tonight as well. They have some offensive fireworks available to them on this team, don't they? 
Swanner, long lead for Randy. Ball knocked away by Garcia, who had come out a little bit. And Kondrich with a steal on Folk, but Lashoff was there for Chicago. Lashoff up the floor. Schlotthauer back on D. They dump it over to Dose, and Swanner out to take it away from it. Gutsy play by Jamie. Lead ball for Scarelli. He got behind the keeper, Garcia. Scarelli looking for Randy. Ball headed away out front. And by this time, Garcia got back of the net. Rincon and Falk ran into each other, and I think they headbutted each other going, going after the same ball. And they are both down, both Chicago players. Rincon is down flat, and uh, Falk is on his knees there. They were both going after the same. Both Chicago players went off under their own power, and already good to see that apparently no... Uh, Nobody seriously hurt in that. They'll have a drop ball at the Chicago red line. That time on the drop ball, Ruben Steven didn't let the ball hit the ground first. As a result, they're going to have to drop it again. It's like the faceoff in hockey. This time it does hit the ground. Valencia comes ahead with it for Chicago. Chava in the Canton zone. Pisano with him step for step into the left side. Chava backs it up. It's Swanson. Sweeps it over to Lashoff. Lashoff trying to work on Kia. That's an interesting matchup. Lashoff moves to the right side. Lashoff and Tima in the corner. Timmy knocked it away from behind. Pisano pins it up against the boards. Lashoff and Tima collide. Pisano trying to get around the two of them. Runs into Valencia and still comes out with it. Ahead to Kenny Lola. Lola on the run with Stevan. Backs it up. Tima coming forward with it for the Invaders. Ahead for Kia. Kia up against the left side boards. Kia and Lashoff collide there, and Lashoff is fouled by Kia, and that's foul number two on the Invaders in the period. Five and a half minutes left in the game. Canton 8, Chicago 5. And the ball knocked away out front, and it hit somebody in the hand. It hit Ruben Stevon in the hand, and that's the fifth foul on Chicago. 5.25 in the period. Tima with the ball for Canton. Back in the goal box for Swanner. How soon you pull the keeper if Chicago if you're Chicago? I'd say about three and a half, four minutes. Three goals down. You it needed at least that much time. Loose ball dumped in the box. Garcia out, led quickly to midfield. Left side Swanson. Team is with him. And now Comrie against Pisano. Comrie centers for Matus, who shoots and hit the post. He wanted Swanson there, and I think Swanson mistimed his move. And there's a foul on Chicago on Comrie, and that'll be the sixth one. So the Invaders will go on the power play with 4.55 left in regulation. And the Invaders leading by three, eight to five. They are two for four on the power play tonight. Time of this penalty will be 10.05. You got to admire the effort here. The Shockers in the fourth quarter, Bob. Although they did play last night, they certainly haven't given up being down 8-3. They've come back to score a couple, had some close chances. But I think they're going to come up a little bit short tonight. 4.55 to play. Penalty will be served by Comrie. It'll be Swanson, Matus, Stevan, and Valencia to kill the penalty for Chicago. And the Invader power play unit. Vosmeyer, Pisano, Schlotthauer, Rudy Pikasinski, and Kia. So Kia injured a minute ago, back out on the floor, and he's okay. Vossmeyer, back edge of the circle, moves around Swanson, ahead left side to Schlotthauer. Back to Vossmeyer, left edge of the circle, now through the circle. Pikasinski posted up out front, sweeps it on the right side to Pisano. Double teamed, Oscar chased back to midfield. And back to Swanner, ahead to Pisano, and over to Vossmeyer. Minute 26 in the penalty, 420 in the game. Vosmeyer ahead for Rudy. Pikasinski drops it back. Vosmeyer on the right side. It comes to Pisano. Oscar working against Steve Swanson. Played the first two years in the beginning of this year with the Milwaukee Wave. Down to Schlotthauer. Walter back up midfield circle to Vosmeyer. Ahead to Pikasinski. Rudy looks through the middle. Double team gets it over to Walter. Back to Vosmeyer. 3.55 to play. Left side it comes to Schlotthauer. Back to Vosmeyer on the right side to Pisano. Pisano looking inside, now in the right corner to Kia, back to Pisano, and now uh, Rudy, Rudy trying to get help in the corner. Double teamed in there, ball knocked free, and it squirts in the goal box, and you've got a whistle and a trip call 
against Stevon, who had taken Rudy Pikasinski down, I think after the ball was already going into Garcia. So Canton will put it in play from the right corner. 41 seconds in the penalty, 336 left in the game. Out front it comes, Vossmeyer sweeps it on the left side to Schlotthauer. Back in the midfield circle to Bobby V. Vossmeyer, a couple of steps forward to the right side to Kia. Kia taps it out to Pisano. Pisano with a move to the left on Swanson. Back to Vossmeyer. Vossmeyer to Rudy. Dumps it left side. Schlotthauer, he wants some room there. Finds Vossmeyer outside. Right side to Pisano. 17 in the penalty. Oh. Shot blocked out of play by Valencia. And that'll be a... Did that hit Rudy? Yeah, Rudy. It hit Rudy. Rudy okay. had a good chance in front. I'm sure he would have liked to score that one for his wife, but it wasn't to be. A little, little rude here? No, a little rude didn't make the trip. Uh, Peggy doesn't like to drive that far in the car. A little rude uh, would have that new soccer ball to play with that Rudy got last week with the 100th point coming. Bob, you got to admire the play of Bobby Vossmeyer. He's yeah. just got tremendous touches on the ball. Great experience. The man knows the game. Three minutes left to play. Four seconds in the penalty. Vossmeyer. There's there's a case right there. He could have tried to force his way around Dosen with a steal and instead just heel passed it back to Pisano. Oscar sends it long. Rudy almost took that away from Garcia. And you've got a foul on Pikasinski and a dangerous play. And that'll be foul number three on the invaders. 246 left in the game. Canton eight. And Chicago five, and the Shockers will call time. And I would imagine that we've probably seen the last of Garcia. We'll come back in just a minute. Before Cleveland St. Joe, the winner over St. Ignatius, 62 to 53. They'll meet Dayton Dunbar, who blew out Cincinnati Oak Hills, 110 to 64. The two NCAA tournament games today, Providence 88, Georgetown 73, and Syracuse goes to the Final Four off a 79-75 win over North Carolina. Invaders lead 8-5, 2.35 left in the game here. Jose Garcia stays in the game in goal for Chicago, dumps it out to midfield. Valencia tries to steer it down, but Tima has it there for Canton. Back in the goal box for Jamie Swanner. Swanner will pick the ball up to take it away from Comrie. Left side midfield for Tima. Tima around Valencia. Matus with an attempted steal, but Tima took it back from him. Tima feeds right side to Randy. Randy couldn't get the shot away. Matus knocked the ball in the corner and dumps it back in for Garcia. And we have two minutes and two seconds left in the game. Outlet to Comrie, right side at midfield, dumps it in the middle for Dosen. Now Valencia with a shot and a honey of a save by Swanner. Comrie with the ball out front. One of the left foot, it was cut off by Kondrich and back out to Matus at midfield. A minute 46 to the Northern Division Championship. Flash off with the ball left side at midfield for Chicago. Through the circle to the right. Now the feet in the left wing. It comes to Chava. Valencia dumps it in the right corner. Flash off with a shot that goes wide. And Valencia there, a minute 29 to go. Ball blocked by Tima, taken by Randy Pikasinski, ahead to Steve Frick. Fricky ahead for Randy. It's a little bit beyond him. And taken back by Dosen. Dosen ahead for Valencia, a minute 17 in the game. Randy with a deflection. Frick took the ball. Frick will take it down in the Chicago zone. Blows around Dosen up the right side. Fricky stops and will back it out to midfield. Tima there. Tima right side pushes it down for Randy Pikasinski in a race with Matus in the corner. One minute to go in the game. Randy dribbling the ball around trying to get inside Matus. Matus able to come away with it, however. Clears it out off the right side boards to Lashoff. Lashoff around Pisano through the midfield circle. 47 seconds. Left side Valencia with a shot that sails wide to the left. And Tima just out hustled Comrie to that. And here we come the other way. Tima for Frick. Frick down the left side. Looking for Tima on the right. Fricky back is it up. Right side to Tima. 30 seconds left in the game. Tima ahead for Kia. Kia shoots. Blocked by Garcia. Comrie gets it back. Knocked away by Frick. Back to Kia. And Kia knocks it back to midfield to Kondrich. 19 seconds left in the game. Kondrich moves to his right. Backs it up to Pisano. Champagne's on ice. 11 seconds left to go. In the corner to Frick. Frick with a shot off the glass. It comes out to Kia. Three, two, one. It's over. The Canton 
Invaders have won the Northern Division Championship of the American Indoor Soccer Association. They clinch it with an 8-5 win over the Chicago Shockers. And we'll be back to wrap it up in a minute. 